today we're getting heavy with it. On Sunday gun day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I hope you're all having a great Sunday so far. Today we have a gun that has always had a mysterious kind of allure in my eyes because you see them all the time in movies and video games, but when looking at them on the surface, they just never really spoke to me enough to justify the price tag. So now that is about to change and today we are taking a deep dive look at the FN SCAR 17S. Since the adoption of the AR-15 by the US military in the early 60s, warfare has changed and so have the needs of most frontline forces. The FN SCAR like this one here was developed based on the criteria set in place by the United States Special Operations Command. They needed something with more power, a cleaner, cooler function, and a round that would be more effective at longer ranges. Needless to say, FN fulfilled what the US was looking for and the SCAR was born. Chambered in 7.62x51, the 17S features a free float, cold hammer forge barrel, and a hard chrome bore. The entire rifle is kind of a strange mix of plastic and metal, with the lower receiver made from polymer and the upper being a single piece of aluminum. It has swappable controls, making it fully ambidextrous, and that played a large part in its military adoption. Towards the rear you will find a telescoping side folding stock with an adjustable cheek riser and it came with an A2 grip which I have already swapped out for this Magpul SL grip. Speaking of add-ons, up front there is a ton of rail space but these guns can get heavy very quickly so in this case I'm just running a vertical foregrip and a scalar works mount with a Trigicon MRO on top. The 17S does come standard with a lot of other features like the flip up iron sights, the gas regulator system, a 20 round box mag, and a few other details which we will hit on here in a second. Here's another pretty exciting detail that I left out. I have teamed up with the guys at Classic Firearms again to bring you all this video and they are actually giving away a 17S just like this right now. If you head over to their website and click the banner at the top of their homepage, you can enter to win one of these yourself but more on that later. So I've shot a few scars in the past which were suppressed and now looking at this muzzle device and coupling that with the power of a 308, we should be in for a treat today. I'm gonna load up this mag, we'll head out to the range right here, put a couple rounds down and then I will come back with my first mag impression. All right, for these first couple of shots, I think I'm gonna opt to use these flip-up sights. I am borrowing this Trigicon MRO and the Scalar Works mount from the Atom Smasher 2.0 build that I put together a while back. I'm gonna say pretty confidently that there is no way that this thing is zeroed, so for now, I'm gonna shoot with the irons, and then we're out here at about 50 yards. Maybe I will set this thing to zero, and then we'll use that for the rest of the video. I'm gonna take a pretty big step back from the camera this time because I'm not exactly sure what this muzzle brake is going to do, but it looks pretty gnarly, so hopefully I'm not breaking any lenses like I did in the past. Now let's see what this thing is all about. Alright guys, back for my first mag impression of the SCAR 17S. There is a ton of stuff to talk about here, but first let's go back to the design and why this thing was even designed in the first place. So the whole thought process behind this, like I mentioned, was to have a bigger round to be a little bit more reliable rather than an AR-15. And some of the reasons for the design behind a SCAR would be the differences between a direct gas impingement system and a short stroke gas piston system. So instead of a traditional AR that is pushing gases up through the front of the barrel here, 
forcing it back into the bolt. That in turn pushes the bolt carrier group back, ejecting around and then loading a new one into the chamber. This one of course uses a gas piston system. So instead of the gases coming all the way back up here into the chamber area where you're gonna get some carbon buildup and things get dirty really fast, on this the gases are coming out through the barrel here up into a gas regulation system and then it's pushing back on a piston rather than getting all of those gases and dirt back into the whole chamber area of the gun. It pretty much goes without saying, but with a design like this, this will be running a lot cooler and a lot cleaner than most AR-15s. The gas regulator up here is designed with a switch, which is pretty hot right now, so I'm not even gonna mess with it. But if I push this front switch over to the right side there, let's see if I can actually do it. Yeah, just like that. That changes the amount of gas that would come up into here and push that piston back. So in this mode right now, this would be set up for suppression. Now I'm not gonna be shooting with a can today, so I'm gonna pop that back to its original position, but that is basically in place there to make sure that there is no increase in cyclic rate with a can on the end of this thing. Now let's get into my actual first impressions of this gun. Basically, whenever you think of a SCAR, I typically always think of a very heavy gun. For the most part, people who own these will set them up in a similar fashion to those who actually use these guns overseas. They're putting massive optics on here because you are able to shoot these things out pretty far distances with that 308 caliber. You see people running lights and lasers and all sorts of things like that. And then for the most part, these end up getting really heavy. Now this is actually my first time shooting a completely stock scar. Like I mentioned in the past, I was shooting most of them suppressed, any that I've had my hands on in the past. So when I pulled this thing out of the box, it's actually not that heavy. The combination of the polymer lower and the one piece aluminum upper on here, it actually keeps this thing fairly light. And as long as I'm not throwing a ton of accessories on here, I think this is actually a pretty manageable weight. The entire rifle is balanced really well. I typically don't run vertical foregrips, but on a rifle like this, it just fits and I actually really like the way that it feels. The other modification that I did make was to the pistol grip. Like I mentioned, I got rid of that stock A2 grip because they're just not really that ergonomic. Now the only problem that you run into with that is that if you go to throw on a regular grip like this here, you're going to have to do some modification to it. This is just a pretty basic AR-15 grip and when you push it up against the lower receiver here, it actually will not fit unless you sort of Dremel out the back. So what I did here, which you guys probably can't even really tell because I'm proud of that work, it came out pretty nice. I simply took a Dremel and sort of rounded off the back part here, that way it fit up there nice and snug. There is no daylight coming through there and overall it's a pretty good fit. Now for the ergonomics, like I mentioned, this is a pretty well balanced gun, especially in this exact configuration right here. The telescoping stock on the back here has a pretty large pull of adjustment. I was just shooting it there on the furthest out setting right here, and when I pull this thing into my shoulder, it feels really good. Before I even had a chance to shoot a scar like this, whenever I looked at it, I was just like, man, it doesn't really look ergonomic, but I'm actually pretty surprised with how everything fits on here. The cheek riser is adjustable, so you can pop that thing up just like that or keep it down. You can telescope the stock all the way into its shortest position, and then like I mentioned, you can even fold this thing, which is a little bit difficult because it's new over to the side right like that. Now with a full length barrel like this, I think folding stocks are I don't know, it doesn't really fit in my opinion, but if you end up changing the barrel length on something like this, maybe you have an SBR and then you're throwing a can on there, I think this is much more fitting for an application like that. As far as the sights go, I was actually kind of surprised there. It seemed like the iron sights were not sighted in for the distance that I was at, but this red dot was a little bit closer. I'm definitely gonna have to sit down at the bench here in a second and get this thing sighted in before we keep shooting it. And like I mentioned, I borrowed this from another build, so probably in the future I will end up swapping that out for something with a little bit more distance. This thing is capable out to a fairly large distance. So I'm thinking maybe a red dot with a magnifier or even something like a ACOG would look good on here. For me, this is really just going to be a fun range gun, but there are definitely some practical applications for this. If you live in a state where you can hunt with a semi-automatic rifle like this, you could definitely put down some pretty big game with that 7.62 round. Now, as far as the controls go, like I mentioned, everything on here is ambidextrous. The bolt catch is only on the left side of the rifle right now, but it actually gives you the option to swap that to the other side. The mag button has some nice knurling on it to pull that 20 round box mag out and it's also available to pull from the other side. 
Here on the other side, you can sort of see the paddle magazine button release, and then of course the safety is ambi on each side as well. Another thing that you will hear people sort of complain about, or I should just say get kind of snagged up on, is the charging handle on this side. This is also swappable. If you take this gun down, you can simply move it to the other side. But one thing that I'm not really sure if I'm a fan of is how it reciprocates. I'll get some shots out on the range here of the left side of this rifle as I'm shooting it, but when you are pulling the trigger, this thing is moving back and forth the entire time. I've actually talked with some people who have used these overseas and I've heard stories of people kicking in doors with their thumb up here like this. And then obviously if you have to pull that trigger and you're kind of not really paying attention to where your thumb is, that thing is gonna come slamming back into your thumb. Can't imagine that would feel very good. There's still a bunch more I could talk about like this muzzle brake and the trigger and some other things. But first, let's get this thing zeroed, shoot it a little bit more, and then I will come back for my final impressions. Now I'm just gonna go for a rough zero here back from 75 yards and I just wanna get it close enough that way I'm hitting steel for the rest of the video but maybe in the future I will come out here and do some accuracy testing. There's already a lot of good information and videos about the accuracy of these things online. Some people like to debate it but from what I've seen this thing is definitely an MOA gun. Now let's see what we can do. Take note of this charging handle as I'm shooting this thing now. You know what, surprisingly this red dot is actually on, so I'm not even gonna make any adjustments and I'm just gonna run it like this for the rest of the video. Let's see what running around with this thing would actually feel like. Surprisingly not that bad. Let's test out a little bit of distance back here from roughly 100 yards. How about my mini TA targets? Even those things ring pretty loud. Now you know a test wouldn't be complete without a good old mag dump. Added a lot of power right there. All right guys, back for some final initial impressions of the FN SCAR 17S. I say initial impressions because this is definitely going in the pile of guns that is super fun to shoot and I will regularly bring out to the range to shoot for fun. 
I guess I'll start with the overall shootability of this thing. I was kind of on the fence about it because like I said, I always pictured these being really heavy and everyone that I shot in the past was kind of loaded out with gear. But this in its relatively stock form without a can on there and a bunch of accessories covering up the rails up here, this thing is actually manageable. Running around with it was really not that bad. And as long as you keep this thing fairly lightweight, it is actually a pleasure to kind of stand around and just shoot around the range. Now the muzzle brake is something that kind of surprised me. I thought that was going to be a lot more violent from my perspective being behind the gun, but it actually was really not that bad. Now when you watch those videos in slow motion there, you can see gas is exploding all out the side of this thing. From my perspective being behind the gun, it wasn't bad, but I definitely would not want to be next to someone at the range shooting one of these. Even with the massive bolt and piston system in here, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more violent, similar to like an AK, and it really wasn't all that bad. In this configuration, that I have it now with the vertical foregrip and the improved pistol grip, I was able to keep this thing on target and it shot relatively flat for the caliber and the size and just what this thing was actually designed for. As far as the trigger goes, this is definitely a combat effective trigger. It's not gonna be the smoothest thing in the world and you're not gonna get any really precise shots out of it. But for a completely stock trigger in a relatively large size gun like this, it was surprisingly smooth. The pull itself is fairly heavy, but the brake is crisp and clean. And there are also some other options out there like Geisley makes that you could drop in a different trigger if you want to do a little bit more with this. Back to the sights now, one thing that I would have to work on in the future is getting these irons dialed in at whatever distance I choose, but I'm surprised that the MRO was actually dead on right from the start. I didn't have to make any adjustments to it, and I should be able to drop this right back on the Atom Smasher 2.0, and it should remain zeroed, so I'm definitely a big fan of this setup right here. So overall, the SCAR has been great. I can definitely see why they sort of have a cult following, and I think I might be on that train now. Definitely a big fan of this gun, and hopefully I will bring it out and shoot it a lot more in the future. Now for the giveaway, like I mentioned, I have teamed up with Classic Firearms to bring you guys this video, and as of right now, if you're watching this video right when it goes live, they are giving a SCAR 17S like this away. I'm sure a lot of you guys have entered Classic giveaways in the past, and this one is no different. You simply go over to their website, click the banner at the top to enter, fill out some information, and then you can get multiple entries as the contest is running. The more of you who go over there and enter the contest will bring more opportunities of cool videos on rad guns like this in the future, so you can help yourself out by trying to win a SCAR, but you could also help me out by going and entering. I know this was a pretty quick overview, so if you guys have any questions or if there's anything that you want to see on the SCAR 17 in the future, let me know in the comments down below. If you have one for yourself, let me know what you think about it. For now, that's all that I got, so if you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week, and that is going to be all for today. So as always, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.